let's get started. So we are here in Blender 3.2. Say goodbye to the default cube. Say goodbye to the light. Let's go to the front view, numpad key one. Now let's add mesh circle, 120 vertices aligned to the view, radius 9.1 for the ring size F2, rename ring size. Here we are. So far, so good. Now let's add curve Bezier align to the view go to edit mode with the tab key right mouse click grab with the g key and move down here right mouse click here grab with the g key and move up there now select everything with a do an s x zero enter to align the vertices now exit edit mode with the tab key now reset all transformation with ctrl a all transforms save ctrl s name your file gourmandise enter enter now go to the top view numpad 7 add mesh circle here the circle is going to have eight vertices and the size make it somehow smaller like this now let's go to edit mode everything is already selected hit the w key subdivide take the secondary vertices with the shift key like this scale with the s key somewhere here exit edit mode with the tab key now select the line, right mouse click, and go to object data properties, geometry. Now bevel object, and you want to select the star we made, but you can't. Escape, select the star shape, and go to object, convert to curve. Now go back to the line, go back to geometry, bevel object and select the star shape curve here we are don't forget to fill the caps go to object shade flat so what we need is a tapper curve top view numpad 7 add curve busy right there now select the shape geometry tapper object select the curve we just made and now we're just even further away from our goal but so far so close we need to work on the tapper curve select the tapper curve if you want move it to a more comfortable place to edit the curve great now let's go to edit mode let scale the curve like this this won't change the tapper much but it will help editing the tapper curve here now the handles are going to change the thicknesses of the tip and the bottom so what we want is a big bottom let's go somewhere there you can move the handles obviously on any axis so you can check the behavior of the shape let's go somewhere here now the base vertices beware if you go negative you're going to cross your own shape and that's something that we don't want today so in this case don't move the base vertices just work with the handles save from time to time and now before we start fine tuning the shape let's go out of edit mode let's take the ring size let's make a copy with shift d enter go to edit mode a move it to this side do an f close the face extrude this way a mesh normals to the outside exit edit mode so we can visualize the finger size for the target shape save take the shape for the ring what we can do better here is resolution let's go at 500 we'll work on that also a bit later now take the tapper curve, hidden right there. Also go to a resolution of 500, enter. And you can start to see that our main shape is starting to get smoother. 
So what we need now is to fine tune the shape of the body of the ring to achieve our goal. So that's mainly done on the tapper curve. And also remember that the shape of the ring is based on just one line. So go to the front view and adapt the position for the thicknesses of the bottom and the height of the tip here. Go back to the tapper curve. Edit mode. Let's fine tune the shape and thicknesses. Before we proceed further with the design, let's go to the main line here and let's work with the tilt. So here you can see that this starts making that cream cone shape that we like so much. Let's go maybe at 360 degrees, enter, exit edit mode. And now also don't forget that we have the star shape, which is the profile of the entire design. So here, let's go to edit mode. Don't forget that we can work on the depth of the design, selecting the secondary vertices and this scale with the S key. So obviously, if you go too deep, the design won't work. You'll have no thickness. And if you go too low, it won't look as nice. So don't forget to find a balance for the entire shape. And now complete the fine tuning on the tapper curve. It's all about the handles and the distances. Now, maybe we need a tapper modifier on the main shape. Let's go to modifiers, add simple deform, tapper, find the correct axis, use the restriction if necessary. So in my case, it's the Z axis locked on the X axis. And obviously here you can play on the factor to play further with the shape. Now, if you don't have enough thickness, Select the star shape and scale it to further work on the thickness of the ring. Obviously, you can also scale the entire shape with the S key. Don't forget to check the thicknesses because obviously we're going to 3D print this design and manufacture it. Save and be happy. Now, let's call it my pretty cream cone shape. Make a copy, shift D, enter, hide the original. Convert this to a mesh with Alt-C. Now, we need some Boolean fast from the ring size. Let's hide the ring size here. So now this is starting to look like a ring. It might look cool in a video game, but in real life, that's too much screwing ergonomy. So here, remember that the original is a curve. Keep it as a curve because we are going to select the star shape, make a copy to the right side of the screen. And now the copy of the original, go to geometry and assign the new star shape, this one. And actually you might want to call it star two. And this one, make it smaller by 88%. And from here, show the main ring here and take the copy and go to edit mode as you want the same parameters, but you want the design to be smaller also on the Z-axis. And here we can visualize perfectly the thickness. So maybe you want the bottom vertex to be higher, like here, exit edit mode. Don't forget to work on the Y scale to set the proper thickness of the edges, as you can see here. Let's make a copy of this, hide the original, transform the copy to a mesh, out C, and we can proceed to the new Boolean, removing the inside to hollow out the shape. Hide the copy, and you can see that the inside looks amazing too. Add mesh torus. So here, segments, let's go at 250, minor, 80, all right, location zero, major axis may be 10, minor axis may be one, depends on the scale of your design. Now here, let's start working on the position. Let's rotate from the side view, move it to the side. So here I'm going to make it a bit smaller and I'm going to work on the scale on the Y axis. Now check that you are overlapping every sharp tip. Object shade smooth. Now here, add Boolean 
fast and remove the ring size on the inside like this. That's pretty nice. And don't forget to add a mirror modifier. If necessary, do a control A all transforms and make the mirror on the Y axis just like this. Don't forget to check the overall design from time to time to see that everything is working as expected. Alt A and save. We still have to create the render. Let's proceed. So we have the main shape. Let's select the sides. Let's go to File, Export, STL. Okay, Gourmandise, Selection Only, Export, STL. Let's go to New Collection. Let's call it Ring. Let's take the camera with us to this new collection here. And let's make an Import, STL. And import the ring shape, Gourmandise. Double click. You can hide the entire development collection right there. Let's find a nice point of view, maybe here. I'll control zero to set the camera view. Now the resolution, make it square 1920 pixels. Now select the camera, go to settings, make viewport display 150 in size. Go to the side view and bring the camera closer somewhere here. Camera view from the camera view, grab and move here. Now you can change the focal length here to adapt this is pretty nice don't forget to add a mesh plane for the ground position your ground to your ring somewhere here all right camera view camera clipping must be adjusted so clipping and 12,000 like this now let's start working on the render preview right here so we need an environment environment color environment texture open your favorite HDR, we're going to use the Brown Photo Studio 4K AXR right here. This is good for the moment. Let's go to shading. Now render preview, don't forget to save for the gold. New material, call it gold. Now here, add search ambient occlusion right here. Plug the color in the base color. Make the gold color right here. Okay, metallic to one, roughness to 0.1. Now here we have some crazy normals and that looks bad. Here, what we can do, go to modifiers, add a remesh. We need some bevel node, add a bevel node right here to the normal. Samples 24, radius maybe 0.5. Let's have a look at this. So we can be happy now. Let's add some scratches, add texture, image, plug it to normal, add vector bump in the middle, plug it to height if you're not using a normal map. Open your favorite scratches image, scratches right there maybe. Now we also need a box projection, blend one, add input texture, Nothing new here, generated to vector. Okay, now the strength is too crazy, 0.1 maybe. Let's have a closer look for these scratches. That's still too much, 0.02 maybe. Just some slight scratches, maybe 0.01 to give it just a bit more of realism. Now for the floor, and to work on the colors and make a nice composition, add a new material, call it floor. Here, add color ramp. Plug it right here. If necessary, add an ambient occlusion node right here in the middle. And let's start working on the colors. So we need some blue, like Prussian blue, somewhere here and a bit darker. Okay, a bit darker. Make the ground metallic maybe at 0.7. Keep the roughness pretty high, maybe 0.5, maybe 0.5. In my case, 0.4 should be pretty fine. Now on the color ramp, add some orange, some peel here, and let's start working on these distances. Okay, okay, here we need some input texture coordinates, put it to generated and factor. Now let's go to top view. We can see that the gradient has some diagonal projection, which is pretty good. Now this is pretty nice. I'm going to add the metallic 
to one. We're going to add some bumps to the floor. Let's add a texture must grab, but we're going to make some lines. Let's plug the height into normal. Let's add a vector bump. Keep it on the height node right there. Add input texture coordinates generated to vector. Add vector mapping right here in the middle. Now let's put the strength to something high as 50. Make the scale of the mass graph a lot higher. Okay, and here we're going to make lines. This means that the scale, maybe the y-axis is going to be 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, until you're happy with the lines you get. I want smaller lines, so let's go at a 12,000 scale for the mass graph and the strength, bring it down again, 0.5 maybe, maybe 0.2, depends the angle. Okay, and that gives a nice effect to the reflections on the floor and make it a bit more attractive. Now, one last touch before we create the render. Let's add some light points. Let's go back here, top left, camera view, light settings, exaggerate the power at the beginning, use the nose and set the strength to something too high to start with. Here, the light is too high. Let's bring it lower, maybe 60. Let's go to size radius three this is lovely don't forget to check your render settings the samples let's go at 500 the denoise is on open image it's the best for the details which are very important in jewelry light path let's go at 32 for everything here now, don't forget to check and tweak the ambient occlusions on the floor and on the gold. The distance maybe go at 25. That's too much. It's too dark. Let's go at 10 maybe. And also on the ground, let's go at a distance of 50. Don't forget to save. Be happy. Hit the F12 key and make your render. Thanks for your support buying my assets or becoming members so I can keep creating such amazing tutorials. Take care, enjoy, and see you soon.